this is Captain Chaudhary. In this session, I will be speaking about the coefficients. We will try to understand what happens to the magnetic compass and its deviation because of the permanent magnet on board and because of the various components of soft iron. We will also try to understand what happens because of the change of heading in a place and what happens because of change of latitude, what happens because of the change of hemisphere. So let us see how the funnel gets influenced uh, because of change of latitude, because of change of hemisphere, because of change of course. Right? So let us say here is a funnel which is close to the polar areas high in latitude. So the pole that is formed is very intense in color. Okay. Now the same ship when it comes close to the equator you will find that the color of funnel becomes light. As the ship crosses the equator the light blue color changes to light red color and after crossing as the ship comes down in deep latitudes you will find that the color has become deep. So in northern hemisphere funnel as well as the mass they have blue tops or blue caps in southern hemisphere they have red caps. The color changes after crossing over the magnetic equator. Near the equator or in tropical areas these colors are very faint. This is because the Z is weak here, Z is strong here. Now let us try and see what happens to the color of funnel on these eight headings. in northern hemisphere. In the magnetic compass. Now, because the induction in funnel is caused by Z, that is the vertical field, because of the change of heading at a place, nothing happens to the intensity of this blue pole. But at the same time, the deviation caused by this pole on different headings will be different. Just to quickly talk about the deviation caused, here the blue pole is in meridian with the compass needle. Because the disturbing pole is in meridian, nothing will happen to the deviation. Deviation 0 here, 0 here. And if you look at these two situations, the disturbing pole is 90 degrees about the meridian. So the influence will be maximum, the deviation will be maximum. So deviation max here, max here. Now when we are talking about the influence of the blue or red pole, remember that the pointer likes blue color, the tail hits blue color. So what happens is the deviation is this way here. In this entire semicircle the deviation is westerly and similarly you will find that the deviation is easterly in this 180 degrees. So this particular deviation which becomes 0 twice in 360 degrees and maximum twice in 360 degrees is called semicircular deviation. We have talked about the center line vertical soft iron. The similar will be the effect because of center line mast. But of course, blue forward and blue off will have different coefficients. So this particular coefficient which is zero on north-south heading, maximum on east-west heading is called coefficient B. In fact, coefficient IB because it is induced B. Coefficient B gives the deviation proportional to the sign of the course or sign of the heading. So everything that you have learned about this coefficient that is IB if I change the things by 90 degrees for example if I have a mass instead of on center line on say port side or starboard side. So single mass on port or starboard side will give rise to a coefficient that is giving maximum deviation on north south heading and minimum deviation that is zero deviation on east west heading that will be called coefficient IC. 
So coefficient IB is given by vertical soft iron in four and a half line about the compass. Coefficient IC is given by vertical soft iron making a field or pole a thwart shape about the compass. Right. Uh, this particular sector is important when we consider the eight headed deviations. In this particular sector, if the deviation is westerly, the entire coefficient is considered negative. And in this sector, if the deviation is easterly, the entire coefficient will be considered positive. So this can be called a test sector. In the test sector, if you have deviation to the east, the coefficient is positive. If you have deviation to the west, coefficient is negative. So that was the behavior of vertical soft iron. Let us look at the behavior of a horizontal soft iron. Let us look at a ship which is heading say northeasterly. Now let us consider a rod over here. Okay, this is in high latitudes north. When the ship comes to the equator on the same heading, let us see what happens. And let us see what happens when it goes to southern latitude. We are talking about the effect or the induction on a horizontal soft iron when the ship goes from high latitude north via equator to high latitude south. So what happens is wherever the signal hits first, as I told you before, a blue pole is formed on the other side, red pole is formed. Now this ship which is close to equator will have very deep pole or intense poles whereas in high latitude the intensity becomes weak because H is weak here. H is very strong near the equator and the same thing will happen in the southern hemisphere on the same heading the intensity of poles is light. So maximum intensity near the equator and low intensity of the pole near the poles or in high latitudes. But the point to be observed here is the color of the poles does not change as the ship goes from northern hemisphere to southern hemisphere. Whereas in case of funnel or in case of any vertical soft iron, a blue top which was there in northern hemisphere will become red top. Okay, now let us look at the behavior of the poles or this soft iron as the ship turns around in any place. Let us look at these different headings. Now this particular soft iron, which is fore and aft soft iron or horizontal soft iron, the color will be blue here, blue here, wherever the signal hits first, the color will be blue and the opposite side will be of red color. Effectively isolated poles are not formed when the vessel is heading east or west. In this particular sector, the blue is aft. In this particular sector, there is a red aft. So we have seen the behavior of horizontal soft iron in a given place when the vessel changes the heading, the colors also change. But on a particular heading, when the ship goes from one hemisphere to other hemisphere, the colors don't change. So this complication arises that on different headings or different hemisphere, different latitudes, the color intensity, etc. changes. So to make the things simple, we have categorized this behavior into different families of behavior. What we call this coefficient, coefficient A, B, C, D, E. There are five families to understand five partial deviations that we will understand in a while. But before that, let me explain to you what happens to the permanent magnet, which is created on board as the ship is built in shipyard. So let us see what happens to a ship that is built on a heading which is say northeastern, we say 040 degrees. So this is the built head and the reciprocal heading is 220 degrees. There is an importance of built head and reciprocal heading. 
Now, as the ship is built like this and for many days the ship is there, a lot of hot work, vibrations, hammering and current passing etc. happens as the ship is built. A permanent magnet is created. Of course it will have uh, uh, X, Y and Z axis of its component. But here we will try to focus on fore and aft and a third ship component. A blue is formed over here and the red is formed over here. If this is the magnetic compass over here, effectively the ship has got an athwart ship and a fore and aft magnet. The fore and aft magnet has got red forward and athwart ship magnet has got red on port side. Fore and aft magnet has got blue aft and a third ship magnet has got blue on starboard side. So P and Q, these are the two fore and aft component and a third ship component of the permanent magnet that is formed on the ship. If this ship is made to turn around with the color change, the color will not change, the color will remain same. So this permanent magnet that has formed on the ship will never change the color, not upon changing the latitude, not upon changing the hemisphere and not upon changing the heading. If the ship goes as it is to the southern hemisphere or if the ship is seen on any other heading also, we will always find that there is red on port side and red forward, blue on starboard side and blue aft. One other very interesting thing about this magnet that is a permanent magnet is wherever you go, whichever part of the earth you go, as long as the ship is on built head or the reverse heading that is 040 in this case and 220 in this case, wherever the ship goes, whether it is northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere, on these two headings that is 040 and 220, the permanent magnet that is formed on the ship will remain in the meridian and therefore there will be no deviation because of the hard iron. That means on the built head and national zero, on these two headings, wherever the ship goes, the hard iron deviation will be zero. So although the color does not change on different headings, but effects will be different on different headings. So for that, let us look at the fore and aft component of this permanent magnet. And let us say, uh, let us consider a case where there is red aft of the compass and these poles are generated when the ship was built and let us study the effect of these poles on the magnetic compass. And let us concentrate on just one pole, there is red aft, because there is a closer and influencing pole. In any case, if you have red aft, it automatically means that there is blue forward. Now what happens is, this particular pole is on the meridian with a magnetic needle, so nothing will happen. Nothing will happen on these two headings. So there is zero deviation here, zero deviation here. Isn't it something like... Uh, the eight headed study for IB, coefficient IB that we have done recently. In this particular case and this particular case, the red is, that is the influencing pole is 90 degrees about the meridian. So maximum deviation will occur in these two cases. Now as I told you, the pointer likes blue color, the tail likes red color. The tail likes red color, so deviation would be this way in all the three cases and deviation would be this way in all the three cases. With maximum deviations in these two headings and zero deviations on north-south heading. Right, so this particular deviation is easterly and westerly over here. Now this is our test quadrant. In this test quadrant, if the deviation is easterly, the entire coefficient is positive. So this is an example for PB. 
We have seen the eight headed diagram for IB. This is the eight headed diagram for PB. Now the way I have PB and IB for the pole in center line and fore and aft about the compass. If I have pole a thought shape about the compass, it will give rise to IC or PC. So IC will come by a vertical soft iron, a thought shape of the compass and PC will come by a permanent magnet component, a thought shape about the compass. Uh, anything you study about B, if you turn the things by 90 degrees, it becomes C. So let us concentrate and study coefficient B properly. Now coefficient B can be divided in two parts. Total B is PB plus IB. Once again, PB is because of the four and a half component of permanent magnet, and IB is because of vertical soft iron four and a half of the compass. Right? Now PB or IB when we talk about the ship we need to say what is the field available outside for example if we talk about say Bremen and we say PB on the ship is so much IB on the ship is so much say for example PB is plus 4 and IB is minus 6 so we also need to say in Bremen how much is H and how much is Z for example, Z is 28 there and H is plus 4. When the ship comes to Mumbai, suppose the H there is uh, 20 and Z is uh, say 10. Now this is the situation of the magnetic field at Bremen. This is the situation of magnetic field at Mumbai. At Mumbai, H is more powerful than Z and at Bremen, Z is more powerful than H. And with H as 4 and Z as 28, the PV of the ship is 4, IB of the ship is minus 6. This is the situation. Now what happens if we don't touch anything, if we don't do anything and the ship comes to Mumbai, will the PV remain as 4, will the IB remain as minus 6? No, the things will change. Now PV and IB will change with the latitudes as follows. Suppose the H and Z at first place is H1 and Z1 and at the second place it is H2 and Z2 and if the PV at first place is PV1, IB at first place is IB1. So I can find out PV2 by a very simple equation that is PV2 upon PV1 is equal to H1 upon H2, inversely proportional to H. Whereas, IB does not change like this, IB2 upon IB1 equal to H1 upon H2 as written here, but also multiplied by Z2 upon Z1. So in case I want to find out what is PB and IB at Mumbai, I will have to use this formula, PB2 and IB2 can be found out like this. For any place, there should be some method to find out how much is A, how much is B, how much is C, D and E. And also, how much is PB and IB, how much is PC and IC. D and E don't have divisions like A, D and E don't have the divisions for permanent and induced. But B and C is studied under two headings. One is permanent, another one is induced. Now A, D and E are not subdivided for permanent and induced but B and C are divided in permanent and induced components right. So accordingly you have PB, IB, PC and IC. The movement of PB from one place to other place would be like this. Same is true for PC. Movement of IB from one place to other place or conversion of IB from one place to other place would be like this and same is true for IC. But at the moment, let us assume that we know the value of A, B, C, D and E at any given place. Now this is the effective A, B, C, D, E of the ship plus the magnetic compass. So if this is the value of A, B, C, D, E, for example, A is plus half degrees, B is plus three degrees, C is minus one degree, D is minus half and E is zero. <clears throat> then if the ship is on 040 degree heading then 
deviation on 0 for 0 would be a plus b sin cos plus c cos cos plus d sin 2 cos plus e cos 2 cos. Now whatever we get by adding algebraically, the algebraic sum will be the deviation on that particular heading, whatever heading we have put. But remember, if you get plus answer by algebraic heading, the deviation will be east and if the final sum, algebraic sum is minus, that means the deviation is westerly. Coefficient PB and PC, they change in a particular manner when you change the latitude. IB and IC, they also change from one latitude to other latitude and there is a different method by which they change. Coefficient D and E is made up of only induced component and D and E do not change with the latitude. So summarizing this coefficient, what is coefficient actually? Coefficient is the maximum value of a type of partial deviation having a particular characteristic. For example, A, what is coefficient A? Coefficient A will give you a deviation which does not change with the heading. Coefficient B is a different category of partial deviation. It gives you a deviation which is dependent on the sign of course. So if I have coefficient B on board, then deviation because of B will be B sine course. So deviation because of a particular coefficient cannot be more than coefficient. Coefficient has got sines plus or minus represented in degrees and the deviation which is found on the basis of coefficient will be east if the answer is plus and west if the answer is minus. C is the coefficient that changes as cosine of the course. D is the coefficient which changes as sine of double course. E is the coefficient which changes as cos of two course. Now D and E is caused by horizontal soft time. D is caused by horizontal soft time which is symmetrical about four and a half line passing through the compass. So typically the girders and beams will give rise to D. E on the other hand is caused by coefficient horizontal soft time. E on the other hand is caused by horizontal soft time which is symmetrical about a 45 degrees line drawn through the compass. Right? So typically E may not be present on board. Well placed compass means on that ship coefficient A, E and IC are absent.